Hello again and welcome back to another Wise and Unreal tutorial where today we're doing really basic reverb zones which are thankfully nice and easy to do. Before we start, as always, I want to let you guys know that if you need any resources from any of these lessons, you can come to this page on my website. Uh, there won't be any resources for this specific tutorial because like I said we won't be using blueprints today but if you find any other uh, lessons on my channel helpful and you want to use the blueprints that we created and just quickly download them you can come here and you can see there's buttons for each lesson where you can download the assets. Uh, yeah but with that out of the way let's jump into today's lesson. So like I said this is nice and easy uh, the only thing really that we're not going to be talking about is just basic integration with Wise, which we've done before. So make sure you check out that uh, tutorial. But once you've got a project set up uh, in Unreal using a Wise project, and you've got some basic sounds playing, you can jump straight into Reverb Zones. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Wise project that we've got integrated with our Unreal one. And we're going to look at creating an auxiliary bus. Now when it comes to using auxiliary buses, it helps to understand a little bit of the basic signal flow when it comes to wise. Uh, so normally, or in a very basic setup, we'd have all our sounds or all our events uh, sending signals straight to the master bus, right? So they're all firing signals straight to the master bus, which then uh, is plays back the sound to the player in their earphones or their speakers or what have you. But what we want to do is we want to create a second bus that our sound travels to first before it hits the master bus. So in our case, let's have a look at this project. Well, the only event we've got really is the footsteps event. So normally what would happen is the footsteps would play, they'd go straight to the master bus, which would then go straight to the player's uh, ears. But creating an auxiliary bus and then sending the signal, the footstep signal to that bus, what we're gonna do is essentially create two signals, a duplicate signal. So one uh, signal is gonna go straight to the master bus, that's gonna be normal footstep sounds, but the second is gonna go to that auxiliary bus first. Once it goes there, it's then going to be reverberated, so the signal's going to change and then be sent to the master bus. So the master bus is going to get a dry signal of our footsteps and a reverberated one, which it will then play back for the player. And of course, depending on what's going on in the game, we can turn that auxiliary bus on and off essentially, so that if we're in a room that we want to hear reverberated footsteps in, we can turn it on and then when we're outside, we can turn it off. Okay, first thing is first, we want to go in, well, first we need to be in the right layout. So under layouts, we want to be in designer. Uh, next, we want to go to the master mixer hierarchy, which should be at the top of the audio tab under project explorer. We want to go to our master audio bus, click on that and we want to create a new, whoops, new child, auxiliary bus okay and then let's give this the name reverb i mean actually no i'll tell you what we'll give it a better name because normally if you if you've got multiple rooms with different reverbs you'll want to create an auxiliary bus for each of those different reverbs so let's say uh we'll just call this medium room verb there we go so it'd be a bit more specific okay so now what we've got is an auxiliary bus with a connection to our master bus but at the moment no signals are being sent to the auxiliary bus but we're going to change that in a little bit first we actually want to add a reverb to the bus whenever something enters this bus what do we want to do anything and if so what do we want to do well in our case the only thing we want to do is add some reverb so to do that we want to select our uh, auxiliary bus go to effects and then here we can just add a load of effects that come with wires as well as I think there's plugins actually you can download for wires just like in the standard door for additional effects. But we're just going to use the built in ones. So let's come over to one of these arrows here to choose a new effect. We go down to wires room verb and uh, let's find something just kind of standard, not too loud rooms. Me, we'll do uh, medium room. How about that? Uh, what you can also do once you've added a reverb is you can go to the edits little button at the end here and you can make some adjustments to the settings of the reverb. Uh, now you can go through these, adjust them how you want to get the kind of right uh, sound reverb that you want for the space you're creating. Uh, and yeah, once you've made your changes, I don't think there's a save button so you can just close the window. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want, you can add extra uh, effects. Maybe you want to add a delay for really big spaces. It's up to you, but I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave mine as it is. Okay, so we've created our auxiliary bus. So let's hit Control S or Command S on our keyboard to save it. Now what you can do is we can come to one of our events uh, that we want to send through that bus so we can test it. So let's go to general settings on um, my footsteps event or not event, my footsteps 
random container I've got here. Uh, and to test it, the quickest way I've seen online is to come to this bit here, auxiliary bus, click on one of these little boxes and pick your bus. So just make sure you open up all the folders and pick the auxiliary bus uh, you want to test out. Click OK. And now whenever we test out this container, sounds reverberated. I think that's a bit of, what we're doing essentially here is we're now, send, instead of creating an on-off switch we want to um, control within Unreal, we're essentially just saying always send a second signal to that auxiliary bus. And that's fine if we're just testing it, but I don't, this isn't really the best way of testing these buses, is it? I hope they come up with a little easier way where we can quickly just demonstrate how the reverb sounds without actually having to root our containers and stuff into it and then remove them again. But hey ho, that's, uh, from what I can tell, that's the easiest way to do it. So once you've tested it, go back, oh, hold on, I'll skip that bit. Go back to the bus, on the auxiliary bus, click the little three dotted button here, go to none, and click OK, and that removes it, we're all good. Third thing we want to do is come under Game Defined Auxiliary Sends, and we want to tick this little box here, marked Use Game Defined Auxiliary Sends. Essentially, what this is going to do is it's going to set this container up uh, for us in Unreal, so that we can kind of, again, turn that signal towards the auxiliary bus on and off. So whilst we're not sending any signal to it right now, once we get into our game, we can use trigger areas, which we'll talk about in a bit, to then say, okay, now send the signal, now don't, all depending on where the player is. And if you want, you can come to this volume part here, you can just kind of change the number just by dragging this little white dot, and you can change how strong of a signal you want to send into the auxiliary bus. And I think I'm just gonna leave mine at zero. And that is everything. So let's hit Control S one more time. The last thing to do is go to our sound banks layout. And because we've obviously made changes to our sound banks, we want to update them. So let's click generate all. That's everything on the Y side, so let's jump into Unreal. Now what I'm going to do in my contents folder is I'm going to go to my Y's audio folder and what I'm going to do is create, as you can see here, we've got uh, audio kinetic uh, objects, I guess you can call them, for the sound bank and my footsteps of them. What we need to do is create one for the auxiliary bus so it exists within our game. So let's right click, let's go audio kinetic, let's go audio kinetic bus and we need to give it a name, and as always, it has to be the exact same name we gave it in Wise. So for me, it was medium, uh, no it wasn't, it was medium room, I nearly put reverb there. Medium room verb, there we go. And I'm actually just gonna go back and double check I've spelt it exactly the same. Cool, it's all good. So once you've done that, double click on it, choose the bank that you basically built this uh, auxiliary bus within and for me it was just my main kind of master bank so I'm going to click the drop down menu hit main and click save and then close that and we're all set up there. Brilliant nearly done uh, now what we want to do is designate an area within our game for which when the player is in the sounds that they emit or the sounds that they're being heard are being sent to that auxiliary bus so in our case whenever our player is in an area we want their footsteps to be sent to that bus so to do that uh, under your modes tab you want to go to volumes and we want to use this the ak reverb volume so click that drag it into our space let's zoom a bit zoom in a bit so we can see it and as you can see, all it is is basically a trigger area marked out by a cube. Okay, so once you've got your AK reverb volume, the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of shape it, resize it, so that it covers the room, the area that you want to reverberate. So let's uh, zoom out a bit. And then using the uh, scale option under the transform part of our object, let's just increase some of these numbers. So let's increase it on the x-axis. In fact, what I probably should have done is centered it a bit better. Then let's increase it on the y, so it kind of covers the room, and I'm just doing this roughly. You'll probably want to be a bit more precise. And then the z, so give it some height about there. We're good to go. Next, we want to tell it which auxiliary bus we want this to control. So let's scroll to uh, the late reverb section. We want to select our bus, so let's go none, we could just drag it, but I'm going to do it this way. Select the medium room verb, uh, and we're good to go. We've also got some settings here. Let's just quickly drag that there. The set level, fade rate, property, and I'm going to talk about those in a sec once we test out our sound. Some other options to note. The toggle, under toggle, we've got enable late reverb. Basically, do you want this to start active or not? You might want to have this uh, disabled and then turn it on 
maybe halfway through your scene for whatever reason, which you can do with blueprints, but I'm gonna leave mine on. Uh, scroll down a bit, something else I found interesting was this bit here, brush settings. So what you can actually do is change, I'm not gonna, because I don't wanna screw with my room now I've made it, but you can uh, change the shape of this. You can change it into like cylinders, uh, spheres, if you don't want it to just be a perfect cube. So that's also an option. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's quickly jump into our scene. Let's hit play, a moment of truth. Oh, wait, moment of truth. Yes, we hear reverberated footsteps. I panicked a bit then, because the first time I did this, it didn't work. For some, for some reason, I did everything I've just explained, and it didn't work, and the way I fixed it uh, was I went back to Wise, resaved it, regenerated the sound banks, went back to Unreal, uh, went back to the, the bank I created in Unreal, and just regenerated that again, refreshed it, basically just went through all the sips again. I also deleted the AK reverb volume and did the, that again, and it works. So I don't know why that happened. If that does, if it doesn't work the first time with you, just go through all the steps again and fingers crossed it should work again. Sometimes wines and Unreal are a bit funny like that. But now that we know that it works, let's see what happens if I leave this area that I've fit my room in. Fades out. So now we've got dry footsteps as opposed to the dry footsteps and the reverberated ones. Uh, well, you may have noticed that that took quite a bit of time to fade out. It took like a second. So let's look at adjusting that. Let's go to the AK reverb volume and let's go to, on the late reverb, let's go to the, uh, not the send level. So what the send level does is about, you can adjust basically um, how much of the signal all of your sounds are, you know, being sent to this reverb. The other one under, um, I've got a late reverb. The other option is priority. If you've got two um, trigger areas or two AK reverb volumes overlapping each other, which one of those two do you want to hear? Um, if your player's in the middle of them both, which one do you want to give more priority to? So the higher the number, the higher priority, uh, and the one you'll hear over all the others that have a lower number. Uh, but like I said, fade rate is the one I want to adjust. So what I'm going to do in order to make the fade time shorter, I want to actually increase this number, so I'm going to increase it to about uh, 10 actually, I was going to do 5, let's make it extreme, let's go 10, uh, and then let's play our scene one more time. Oh, whoops. There we go, fades out almost instantly. So you can hear the difference as I move between the rooms, brilliant! And yeah, I think, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about for this lesson. Like I said, this is very, this is extremely basic, but what's good is once we kind of get an understanding of this, we can move on to some of the more advanced stuff. And with Why Is It Unreal, when it comes to reverb, it does, it can get really advanced. Well, spatial audio in general with Wise, they've really done, there's a lot of options, a lot of tools you can use. Uh, for example, you can create sort of reverberated space by checking the actual environment. So once you've, once you've built an environment, you can use raycasts and stuff to kind of check for where the walls are, check what textures they've got on them, as well as their normal mapping, so the kind of grooves and stuff they're supposed to have on them. And from that, from what I understand, you can almost procedurally generate reverbs and stuff. There's also something called uh, AK Acoustic Portals, which is something I'm still trying to learn myself, where you can kind of blend two reverbs together if you're moving from one area to another. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to talk about that soon. Uh, but yeah, like I said, for this lesson, we're all good to go. That's everything. So if you need any resources from, well, not this lesson, but any of the other tutorials that we've done on Wise and Unreal, don't forget to come to the page I've set up on my website and check out the other lessons. And also, if you just want general news from me, don't forget to sign up to the scottgamesounds.com uh, newsletter. Uh, you'll find a link to that in the description, maybe a card in the top right corner, or you can just come to the website and you'll get a free F1 and Unity lesson from my uh, course. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that is everything. So if you enjoyed this video, give it one of those. And if you want to see anything specific, uh, just drop me a comment, let me know. I'd love to take your recommendation. So I've been Henry Scott. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.